an alternative protecting group for amines, and one that's probably a little more familiar feeling anyway, is the carboxyl group, CO2R. And so if we draw that out in full, it's a carbonyl group where the carbonyl carbon is linked to an alkoxy group. And this R group within the carboxyl group can take on a variety of structures. If we again think about connecting this group to a nitrogen, we have a good electron withdrawing group in the carboxyl group with the oxygen more electronegative than the carbon and the two atoms linked by a multiple bond, a double bond. And so we have that classic electron withdrawing resonance that really shows how the lone pair is delocalized into oxygen as well as nitrogen. And this tames its basicity, same as the sulfonamide group. And so the carboxyl group naturally is just another example of an electron withdrawing protecting group that we use to kind of tame the basicity of the amino lone pair. This functional group in which nitrogen and oxygen groups are connected to a carbonyl carbon is called a carbamate. And carbamates are nice because there are, are really a variety of different deprotection methods that can be used to remove them. Having the alkoxy group here is actually advantageous for that since we've got CO2 kind of built in here. And so if we can do things with this R group, for example, using a nucleophile to kick off a carboxylate that could lead to decarboxylation and freeing of the amine that provides a variety of different ways to deprotect, and that's advantageous from a synthetic perspective. We can try a large number of things. If our first try doesn't work, we can change up the conditions to try a different deprotection method. They're a bit easier to deal with and a bit more strategic in that sense than amides, where this would be a carbon group instead of an alkoxy group. To protect, we really use this idea of nucleophilic acyl substitution. And this is typically done using something that looks like a carboxylic anhydride, but with alkoxy groups on either side. So in the middle of the molecule, we have something that looks like an anhydride with a cent central oxygen, two carbonyl groups flanking it. But instead of carbon groups here, you know, say if we were looking at acetic anhydride, we'd have methyls on the outside. We have alkoxy groups. And these are often called oxy anhydrides. For example, when the R3 groups are tert butyl groups, this would be tert butoxy anhydride. And here again, it's important to use a base to essentially mop up the carboxylic acid that would be produced as a byproduct of this reaction. As before, as in the sulfonyl case, we can think of the source of the protecting group as an electrophile, actually at either of these carbons. And we can think of the remainder of the molecule really as a leaving group, right? This carboxylate portion that I'm highlighting here is gonna act as a leaving group in this process. And as before, the amino nitrogen does what it does best and acts as a nucleophile in this reaction. And we end up with a substitution process with respect to the electrophilic reagent where the nucleophilic nitrogen substitutes for a carboxylate leaving group. The role of the base is to deprotonate the amino nitrogen and, and really practically speaking, generate a salt that can be easily separated from the neutral carbamate product. And so we'll end up with something like triethyl ammonium carboxylate here, and this salt can be readily removed in aqueous workup, allowing us to isolate the carbamate. A few different types of deprotection strategies can be used for different types of carbamates, depending on the identity of this R3 group that we incorporate. So for example, when that R3 group is a methyl, we end up with methyl carbamates. These can be deprotected de through nucleophilic acyl substitution with a very strong nucleophile, something like methyl lithium, that adds to the carbonyl carbon and kicks off an N minus leaving group. And upon aqueous workup, we end up with the neutral amino compound back. Just to very briefly highlight this, this is something like the methyl anion adding into the carbonyl. Now this will happen over two steps. I'm gonna be bad and abbreviate it here briefly. Nucleophilic addition and then beta elimination of the nitrogen really severs this key carbon nitrogen bond. And eventually after workup, after proton transfer from aqueous acid, right? leads us back to the neutral amine. There are a number of examples where people have gotten creative with the structure of the R group in order to design strategic deep protection conditions. And this is one example, two trimethylsiloethyl carbamates. That's a bit of a mouthful, um, but the reason I wanted to highlight this was because it takes advantage of the affinity of silicon for fluorine, which we saw previously in the silyl ether protecting group video. If we use a fluoride source in conjunction with this protecting group, Fluoride can coordinate to the silicon, and this creates a situation where we have a nucleophilic carbon and two atoms away from an atom that could potentially act as a leaving group. And so after that fluoride coordinates, we end up with an anionic silicon, and this may be a discrete intermediate or it may all happen at once. 
not sure about the exact mechanism here, but this will get the gist across. And then we can get an elimination process that results in, in decarboxylation. And again, just to abbreviate the electron flow, at some point an acid becomes involved and we protonate the amino nitrogen to get to the neutral amino product. And so the idea here is that really the fluoride is doing the business of promoting decarboxylation and cleavage of this key carbon nitrogen bond to free up the amine again. So carbamides are nice for their kind of flexibility and deprotection conditions. They provide a, a wide variety of potential deprotection strategies depending on the identity of this R3 group. They're also perhaps conceptually simpler to understand since they're just yet another example of a carbonyl compound, but they have the same effect ultimately as sulfonamides where the idea is delocalization of this amino lone pair into an electron withdrawing group. This tames its basicity, really lowers its basicity, and enables us to put complex organic molecules containing amino groups into acidic conditions without worrying about protonation and further side reactions of the amino nitrogen.